Hi, welcome to my studio in beautiful Colorado in the USA. We're going to talk today about posture, how to sit and how to hold the guitar in a way that allows you to play great and that doesn't harm your body. Now, you may think, well, that must be simple. It's one of the most challenging things about playing classical guitar is to accomplish those two things with your posture. Uh, the problem is how do we determine how to sit and hold the guitar when there are so many ways that we see it done. I mean, even just in the classical community, there's at least four different ways I see the guitar held. Some are more common than others. In the steel string world, you know, it's all over the map. The solution is to do a bit of an inventory of different ways that classical guitarists sit. And what are the good points about those sitting positions and what are the bad points? And I promise there'll be some of both in all of them. We want to not get injured. We spend a lot of time playing the guitar. If you're doing something that puts undue stress on any part of your body, particularly your spine, um, eventually it might get hurt. Some people survive, but almost everybody I know who's been playing a long time has got some back trouble. We don't want back trouble. The first thing to keep in mind is when you play the guitar, the overwhelming amount of strength and effort is in the left hand. The right hand does cool stuff and it can be exhausted. But the left hand is working, I don't know what, how many times harder, but a lot harder. We have to squeeze the neck, we have to push the strings down. And what happens is we want to gain mechanical advantage over the neck, over the strings. And when we do that, it tends to create the way that we sit and the way that we hold the guitar and the way that we engage muscles in our body. The two things that we do mostly is we want to see our hand and we want to press really hard. And both of those things draw our head over this way and make our spine twist in the lumbar region to the left. And you can do those things, we're made to be able to twist, but to sit for a long time, for many, many days, years, eventually those structures are going to be damaged. We don't want back pain. I've had back pain for many, many decades. Because of my guitar playing, I hurt my body pretty good. And I'm still doing okay, but I had to change the way I sat. I had to change the way I thought about technique, everything. So let's talk about three positions that we can use to play well, maybe avoid injury, and have a great time. So what we're going to do is we're not just going to arbitrarily choose a position. We're going to choose a position based on the architecture of how our left hand intersects with the guitar. This is, if you haven't thought about it, this is the playing field. I mean, we go up here sometimes, but not that much. So the playing field is from the nut to the 12th fret. If you have a cutaway, you know, it's a little further, so you can add that. But it's about 13 inches. And what we'd like to find out is if we can make the middle part of our left hand, which is the, the second finger, intersect with the middle part of the fingerboard, both horizontally and vertically. And horizontally, the middle part is between the fourth and third strings. So we don't really want to play off a string, so we'll play on the fourth for this exercise. And the middle uh, point of frets is, is six. So we're gonna use that spot to find out how our architecture intersects with the guitar. What we want, and I'll talk about this in the next lesson, which is going to be about left hand, but we want this tip joint, or the tip, it's called a, a distal flange. We want it to intersect with the fingerboard exactly perpendicular. So it's pointing right straight down in both this plane and this plane. So the fingers will all be rounded uh, this joint won't be bent, but the other ones are all rounded to try and make that angle appear so that the tip phalange can, uh, can be intersecting the neck, as I mentioned, perpendicular. So if I just bring my hand to that, 
thumb in the middle of the back of the neck. I can put the next finger down next to it, the third finger. They're both going to be parallel, or per perpendicular, sorry, to the neck. And then these two kind of wedge in. So I'll just use the second finger for now. And right now it's incredibly comfortable how I'm holding it. I've got all the weight on my leg now, but I'm not twisting my shoulder in any way. I'm not using any of these muscles. Everything's relaxed. The elbow is being pulled down towards the ground by gravity. And I'm just using the slightest amount of bicep to hold the forearm, thereby making the hand intersect with the neck the way that I want. So now, rather than, like I said, pick an arbitrary position to sit in, we found out first how this works best. Now I need to put the guitar in a place where I can keep this position. So obviously I'm not going to play on my right leg, and I've never been able to play on my right leg. The guitar is just too far away. Um, I don't really want it way out here, although that is somewhat what's going to happen when I use a footstool. But yeah, keep in mind that this is the key to everything. Find out what your hand should look like on the guitar, what happens between your hand and the shoulder, and then find a way to sit that'll accommodate that. So we're going we're gonna to look first at uh, the old traditional position of using a footstool. Uh, using a footstool has got some great advantages. It's probably the most powerful position you can be in for, for really dominating the neck with your left hand. Uh, the guitar doesn't move very much because you've got the left foot on the footstool. So the left knee is sticking up. You can set the waist of the guitar on the left thigh. Uh, the heel block is going to land on the ins inside of your right thigh. You're going to lay your arm on the guitar, probably in the midpoint between your elbow and your wrist, completely relaxed, and then bring your hand up to that magic position. And what we want to get out of this is you've got four places that the guitar's intersecting with your body and holding it very steady. You've got this, this, your chest, and the weight of your right arm. This is a very powerful position. My shoulder isn't being twisted very much. It's, it's out a little bit. This would be neutral. But that's not, that's not severe. I've not heard of that many shoulder problems. I've never had one. Uh, right arm is really comfortable like this. Uh, I'm going to add one more thing to the mix. Uh, we don't want the guitar to slip. And as you know, we have these beautiful, shiny, uh, slippery, uh, finished guitars. And when you put the guitar here, it's fine. It doesn't want to go anywhere. But it, well, <laughs> it does. But then when you put your, the weight of your right arm on it, it won't, it won't slip out that way anymore. But now it wants to go that way because of the weight of your arm. So... Years ago, I found that there's this great thing called the sticky pad. Uh, these were invented and, uh, and marketed to set on your dashboard so you could put your phone on it and it wouldn't slip. Uh, I don't know they, if they're used that way anymore because I've never seen anybody in a car with a phone who wasn't looking at the phone while they were driving. So, yeah, you can still get these. Um, I'm going to put a sticky pad any place where the guitar intersects with my body. So we need that one there, one down here. I don't have one, but that's what I, where I'd put it. But as soon as I put that there, the weight of my right arm, the guitar is not going anywhere. So this is uh, this is kind of the magic solution for how to sit and have great power and control over the guitar. However. This is also the best way to injure your back because uh, when you have your foot on a footstool, and by the way, my footstool today is uh, it's actually a box of CDs. I don't own a, football, a footstool anymore because it hurt my back so bad. But I, in my basement, I have 7,000 CDs that nobody's ever going to buy. So yeah, if you want to get a great deal on a heavy footstool, Maybe you should get some CDs. I know you don't have a CD player. The problem with this position is with your left 
foot, X amount of inches. And th this is seven inches in my case. When I was younger, I had it like 10 inches. Some people have it lower, but still to have this leg or this foot X amount of inches higher than your other one is going to make your pelvis unsymmetrical and that's going to make your spine unsymmetrical and the chances of having back trouble are huge. Then throw in the fact that we want to twist to see the neck to the cervical spine and the lumbar spine, even the thoracic. Everything is twisting that way. And then we want to have all this power, so we're, we're kind of leaning towards the left hand. Now, you may not think you're, you're doing those things, but you're, you are doing them unless somebody told you not to or you thought of it. This is the problem with the footstool position. But when you start, when you're starting with your postural awareness, I don't think it's a bad idea to use a footstool because all we're going to do without a footstool is try to imitate what it would be like if we had one. And we have a good method of doing that. But if you want to start with the footstool, bravo is fine. Unless you have back trouble already. I wouldn't stay with it for very much, for much more than a few months tops. And I'll never use one again. So thus ends the lesson on the footstool. All right, position two. This one is uh, featuring an, an object which I think is the most important thing that's happened to classical guitar since the invention of nylon strings. These kind of prosthetic uh, things that you attach to the, to the guitar, uh, there's a lot of different ones. This one's called Ergo Play, and it's fantastic. You can change uh, angles, you can change uh, the height of, of the two legs, which would change the angle of your guitar. All you do is you, it's got these suction cups, Stick them, and you, you can put it in a lot of different locations. This is just how I found is the is the mean for me. And you squeeze down the the little suction cups, and bam! Without lifting my left leg, I've got the guitar pretty much in the position that I just described with the footstool, uh, sixth fret, second finger, fourth string. Very comfortable. Problem with this is that the suction cups sometimes come unstuck. They make another device that's got magnets, which is really clever. So you have magnets that you ins you install on the inside of the body, and then you bring the thing in, and it goes, and that doesn't go anywhere. That's that's locked. Okay, so I've got the guitar in exactly the same position as as when I use a footstool and it's it feels really secure it's being secured at four points this leg this leg weight of the arm guitar against the chest it's not going anywhere it feels fantastic and this is even a better position than the footstool because I'm not moving out quite as much to get the neck this brings it in closer to me in this plane and it feels it feels amazing. I mean, I almost could play this way, but I, I don't. I've established another position that I'll show you in a minute. So the final solution is the one that I alluded to earlier. That is the one that, that I solved my problem with. I didn't get healed. My back is still a disaster, but I could sit for as long as I want to play and I don't get pain. And I have a also control over the architecture of the intersection between my hand, left hand and the guitar, as I described earlier. In fact, it's in the best possible position for that, that of the three that I'm discussing today, because I'm not having to twist my shoulder at all to get to the power, power place of fourth string, sixth fret, middle finger. Everything is completely relaxed. Everything is neutral, no spine twisting. Right arm is relaxed onto the guitar. The only downside of this of this position is you only touch it you only touch it to your body in three places besides your left hand, which doesn't really help. Um, right leg, chest, right arm, and you know now and then when you're squeezing the neck, that gives you a little stability. But when you let go of it, it's it's not helpful. But this part is the you won't hurt your body ever part. 
at least not from playing the guitar, which which is nice. In this position, besides the incredible comfort of it, I mean, I'm just sitting here like I'm working on a computer. I'm completely comfortable. Head is pulled up like there's a string pulling my center of my head to the aliens up above. There's one... Uh, the other two positions I showed you, the guitar was pretty much parallel to the plane of the chair, I guess, or your hips, if they're not being forced out of alignment. This one, the guitar goes out about 30 degrees off axis from that. I think it makes the left hand even happier to be out a little bit than playing really close to the body. But that's still a, a working theory. So that's what I know about sitting. Uh, I'll throw in one other, which I don't recommend, but I actually don't not recommend. recommend. There's a, a great guitarist named Paul Galbraith who sits this way with a bit of help. He's got a, 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 a he's got a end pin that sticks out like a cello, and then he puts it on a box, and he holds the guitar like this. Shortly after I had my surgery, I started sitting like this. And what I found was also it didn't twist my spine. My arms were really comfortable. Shoulders were really relaxed. And this isn't a bad one to try. I mean, you should try all four. Again, starting with the footstool isn't a bad idea. Although, don't tell anybody I told you to. Because you have to get off the habit within a month or two. And then go to one of the others. But this position, even though the guitar is a little bit off axis, the, the neck is, is relatively straight, so I don't have to have a lot of, uh, of going up and down. It's just pretty much going across. Uh, it puts my right hand right where I want it, which is over the sound hole, because that's the sound that I like. I don't play down here very often. And yeah, it's, it's a great way to sit. So feel free to email me. If you have questions, I'd love to help. I want you to play great, and I want you to have fun, and I want you to not get hurt. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. Uh, accompanying this project, there's a there's a uh, video of me playing this fantastic new piece called Chapdelaine. I love the name. Written by Dennis Hayes, a fantastic composer from San Francisco, and a darn good winemaker, too. Uh, I'll be using on that video this position, and you'll see how comfortable I am. Interesting piece. It's it's in crazy tunings. It's got an F as the low string, A, then a C here, a, a G is normal, and then C, where the B should be, and a D on top? I think so. And... I tried so hard to learn it from the music and finally I had to realize that it's just too many strings that were tuned wrong. I couldn't keep track of them. So I made a tablature out of it and it's really quite easy to get around and it's not a hard piece to play. You know, per great note, it's probably the easiest piece I've ever played. It's fantastic. So watch that and notice how incredibly comfortable I am.